What is up, guys? It's the Sound Alchemist, and today I'm being joined by... Gershwan. And we're talking about you guys in a question and answer video entitled, By the Greater... Yeah. For the Greater. Bum, bum, bum. And, and um, uh, this is a video series <laughs> where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, comment down below. Put a question for your question, because we get those questions first. This is what the big one did. Whoa. <laughs> he asks... What steps is the Imperium taking to prepare for the impending full-scale invasion of the Tyranids? What steps, you ask? I think it's right foot, left foot, right foot, another right, and left. Yes. And those exact steps. There is an Inquisitor named Inquisitor Crippman who is actually has been studying uh, the biology and the genetic makeup of the Tyranids. Uh, he is trying to... Um, uh, manipulate the Tyranids to fight uh, away from the Imperium, or at least away from Terra. Yeah. Um, that's how they're preparing. He gave them the name too, right? Tyranids? Yep. yep Just yep. because of the planet that they first invaded or first ate? Yep, the Tyrant planet. Yeah. Um, and yeah, other than that, it's just, you know, fortify the world's um, bow. Saw it firsthand that, like, it's tough. Yeah. Um, you could have a whole freaking chapter and all your successor chapters fighting against the Tyranids and still it'll seem hopeless. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy though. Especially when it's a freaking Blood Angels. Like one of the main chapters. I do feel that the Tyranid lore has been sidelined a little bit uh, just because the tabletop Tyranids suck. Um, well, I mean, I guess it depends on how you play them, right? Mm -hmm. um, I still lost all my <laughs> games against them. But again, what game have I won? Yeah. <laughs> um... But yeah, uh, I, I, I do feel that they will come back to the lore and make it more beefy and meaty. Yeah. Next question. Uh, this one's by VMC Wolverine. What item from the lore of 40k would you like to see in a miniature and board game? Uh, what item? That's what he said. That's a tough one, um, just because like all I, all I can I can think of is um, weapons, uh, like the electric or like no digital weapons from the Chikara weaponsmiths. Mm -hmm. That would be kind of cool. Oh, what about that one like Kinnab Kinnab branch Kinnabrock the sword the sword thing? Yeah, that'd be cool. Maybe if you like do a wound on a character, they become chaos or part of your chaos. Oh, yeah. Uh, next question comes from the Mandela bird. How long after death can an apothecary take gene seed from a fallen marine? Um, I think it's it's whenever. Mm -hmm. uh, I know Chaos Space Marines um, have like gone back to planets to harvest gene seed, uh, knowing that there were space marines that died there, like m many, like uh, years or or centuries after. Next question. The Mandela Bird. How many rogue traders or rogue trader houses are there? And how many are actually named? The cool... Well, I don't know about how many are actually <laughs> named. I was going to say, the cool thing about rogue traders or the thing with GW and rogue traders is that they leave that very vague for you to create your own. Right. <laughs> but there's, there's quite a few of them that are named at least. Um, tons more. I'm feeling really weird right now because I look there. There's a screen right next to the camera, and we we are seeing ourselves. And for some reason, I looked up, and I was speaking <laughs> faster in the camera than I was in real life. That's weird. Anyways, this camera on me. <laughs> next question comes from Joe Fanning. Of all the name, mm, yeah, of all the named weapons in 40k, I example the God Splitter. What are each of your favorites? Yeah, now I can't even think of them. <laughs> uh, the Dawn Blade. The Dawn Blade sounds pretty badass. Um, weapons, 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 huh? Like, wh which one sounds badass? Yeah. Uh, I can't think of any right now. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, huh? The butt muncher? <laughs> oh, we're talking about 40k. Yeah. 
Uh, next question. This one is again by the Mandela Bird. If a Tyranid High Fleet were to attack an awoken Necron world, who would win? Would the Tyranids eventually cut their losses and run if they were losing? I'm going to do a 40 effects in the Tyranids versus Necrons because it just sounds badass. It is badass. Um, but it depends on the, the dynasty. Mm -hmm. And it depends on how much is awoken. If it's the entire planet uh, or Necron Tomb World and they had no nothing destroyed, the Necrons are going to put up a fight. Yeah. Um, but if it's just like... Because um, there's different types of Tomb Worlds. If it's like the... I think it's... Is it a Chrome World? No, I'm thinking of Eldar now. But if it's one of like the smaller uh, Necron worlds, then yeah, uh, the Tyranids would destroy them. Mm -hmm. uh, next question comes from Degal Rants. Who is the strongest Inquisitor that has ever existed? Like strongest physically? I think that'd be in uh, Rex. Because he's basically the size of a Space Marine. Yeah. yeah and he he like dons Space Marine armor. Yeah. Um, but strongest as in like philosophical terms, like power. I would have to say Malkador the Sigilite mm -hmm. or Malkador the Hero. Because he's the OG. Or uh, Socrates. <laughs> Next question. Uh, this one is by Nanite Fox. Is Malkador immortal? <laughs> no, he's dead. Yeah. The Golden Throne uh, almost killed him. Yeah. Next question comes from Matthew Smith. Gersh, why are you wearing the same uh, shirt for like three videos, bro? Need a drop pod filled with shirts, mate? Um, yeah, if you want to send us uh, a drop pod full of shirts, I would gladly take them. I am a large. Um, but our P.O. box is actually broken. <laughs> so you can't send it our way. And the reason we wear the same uh, shirts is because um, we filmed all videos, all Greater Wall videos in one day. Um, and if you notice me wearing the same shirt on um, multiple weeks worth, it's just because I have like three pairs of shirts. <laughs> That's six shirts because the pair is two. Yes. Quick muffs. Muffs. Next. What happened to that guy? <laughs> uh, next question. Uh... Got one from Kyle Walker. He asked, do you think there could ever be an event such as the Heresy 2.0? Yes. There's many heresies happening all over. I think the closest thing we got to it is the... the I forgot what it was called. The Bad Ab War. Yeah. When uh, a bunch of space marines went renegade and eventually they went chaos. Um, I When the Primaris first came out, my initial uh, spec speculation was that, the, that eventually the Primaris were going to turn evil and it was going to be like some... Uh, big galactic civil war of like the old space marines versus the new primaris marines um but obviously that's not gonna happen gw wants the primaris to stay primaris is the new wave uh next question the mandela bird can the Catan go into the warp and if so what happens to them uh, probably but i wouldn't recommend they go into the warp because that's their weakness um <laughs> there's actually a reply to you saying they probably could but they don't have a need to since they have actual technology that can break into the webway if they go into the warp nothing would happen because they don't have souls <laughs> and then the best part about this he says oh never mind you said Catan I thought you said Necrons <laughs> why not just delete your comment <laughs> yeah um I, have you guys seen the video of like the little girl who has the cotton candy no, I think it's a monkey that has a cotton candy. It's a raccoon. Oh, it's a raccoon. And then they put <laughs> a it in a water. <laughs> monkey to a raccoon. Yeah. yeah. Um, but they put the cotton candy in the water and it dissolves. And then like he's like <laughs> looking for it. That's what would happen to the Catan. Yeah. It's funny because like raccoons clean everything they eat. So I was like, oh, cotton candy. Let me clean it. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. That's why. Mm -hmm. Next question comes from Marcel Goussard. It's been a while since we've heard from you. Uh, my one friend who plays Magic the Gathering and 40k says Nicole, Nicole Bolas could beat the Emperor in a fight. Is he right? I hope not. I don't think so. Because Planeswalkers are super strong. 
And Nicol Bolas is an elder dragon who has been amassing power throughout, throughout eons and different planes and stuff. And uh, in this last set, uh, core set, um, War of the Spark, he basically had all his plans throughout the millennia finally culminate, and he still got beat. <laughs> so, no. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, next question comes from Norton Vigiano. Can a human marry or mate with an Eldar or other Xeno races? <laughs> so that's all the fan figures out there. I'll give you an answer. Yeah. Unfortunately, no. Uh, there used to be lore that said that you could do crossbreeding. Yeah, and there'd be like really powerful psyker babies that come out of it. Yeah, there's there's a, uh, a named character. Uh, he was a librarian who was um, half, half uh, Eldar. Yeah, he's very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, that sounds really badass. Like, I could just see... Like a book being written about him and seeing all the uh, racism and all the troubles that were befallen him to his rise to being like a really powerful psyker. Because being a, a psyker sucks. So you gotta get trained and you could almost die and all that. And then being a half breed sucks because you don't know who to relate to your human side, your elder side. And on top of that, humanity sees Xenos as like, you know, like forbidden. They have xenophobia and all that. So I think it would make for a really good like novel. Um, to see him rise through all that and be a powerful, well-respected psyker within um, the Imperium. But GW's like, nah, not canon. Yeah. Last question. The Fool 06, is Rogodorn really dead? And if not, can he come back and how? No, I don't think he's dead. So the thing with um, Rogodorn is that he was fighting, I believe, on the Phalanx. Um, and he was fighting against uh, some chaos sorcerer person uh, or greater demon. And um, nobody really knows what happens. All they know is that once they entered the phalanx or the room where they were fighting, all they found was the severed arm of... It wasn't even his arm. It was like his hand, wasn't it? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So the the hand of uh, Robodorn... Um, and they couldn't find the body. They didn't know what happened to the body. My speculation is that he went into the warp, the warp gate closed, cut in the hand, um, and he's still around without a hand. Or arm. Yeah, since he's in the, he's in the warp, um, maybe he could come back with... Uh, um, Legion of the Damned? Yeah, or Drago can give him a hand. Boom, boom. <laughs> Those are the questions for today. <laughs> if you guys have more questions for us, comment down below. Thank you so much for letting us uh, talk to you guys about the lore. And uh, yeah. yeah. Sound Alchemist. Gershwan. We'll see you next time. <laughs>